King and Yates, they bridging the gap From the US to Dubai, put pins on the map Ball is life and that's a fact And a ball is life, about that exact King and Yates, they bridging the gap From the US to Dubai, put pins on the map There's a time to score and a time to assist Ain't no YN Look. team, let the winning commence From generation to generation, game don't stop The new and old school got the game on lock It's all legendary, it's all necessary We all been all stars before February And after that, King and Gates, after racks But really trying to get some wins, not just padding stats Two basketball lovers through happenstance Like that. It, 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 listen, they 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 bridging the gap. They bridging the gap. They they it, 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 listen. They 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 bridging the gap. They bridging the gap. They they. BTG Nation, we are back in action. Snipes, what number are we on right here, big dog? This episode, what number is this? Number six, episode six, season four, back in action. What's up, people? How we going? OG, triple OG, we here, we here, we here. This is a good week for us. It's crunch time. It's a good, no, 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 no. It's a week, it's a week for us. It's a great week for the players. Mm -hmm. For us, it's killing us. It's a, it's a, it's the <laughs> HMD, HMD family. The Young Bucks are definitely in for a treat and they've been enjoying this week. And BTG Nation, you know what we're talking about. We're talking about our our love project, our our dream right now that we're building that's becoming a reality. Who mounts in Dubai? Who mounts in DXB? Who mounts in that AE online? Um, we're live. Winter time in the desert. Feels great. <laughs> now we burn, I'm burning up in here right now. Yeah. It's beautiful outside. Yeah, yeah. Might say hook up the. Uh, Temperature in here. Yeah, you know, as soon as we turn the AC on, that thing gonna be brisk. <laughs> yeah, but he, he normally has that door open too. Yeah, yeah. You know, he ain't that strong. Oh, he gonna be working out for real. We gonna get him there, man. <laughs> he just learned the push ups, <laughs> man. Yeah, man. You don't have a mic. Stop talking so much, man. You gotta get crazy. But BTG Nation, man, this is camp week for us. And those of you that listen to us on the pod, you know, camp week, we ramp it up because we're going to go on vacation and a little hiatus soon. So we're going we to give you a handful of stuff. So these episodes, we try not to timestamp them so you guys don't, we don't miss out on anything. But OG, man, what's, what's a little, little check in? How you feeling? Um, you know, I'm good. I'm good. I'm, you know, I'm um, recovering from a little, a little setback with injury, but I'm good, yeah. man. Yeah, 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 yeah. Did you? I haven't. You haven't hooped in like two weeks, have you? Three weeks. Yeah, it's, yeah. Not, not only hoop. I haven't been in the gym. I haven't been able to do nothing. Yeah. See, I, I, I missed a bump last week because I had, you know, daddy duties, um, and then I was sick the week like pretty six days before that, so I didn't get to lift anything yet. So. That that gives me an itch, man. Okay. It gives me an itch. It's, it's tough. I'm going to get back to it this week, though. I got to get in there. Oh, you playing this week, this Thursday? Nope. No, nope, because everybody out. This is it. Everybody last out. Last week was the last one. Yeah, so listen, man, while you guys are here early, we got a new, <laughs> we got a lot of new people locked in. And so make sure you like, comment, subscribe, give us ratings, reviews, and all those good things. Um, we're going to be, we're going to continue to do what we got to do to share, share game, bridge the gap with info and make sure that you guys are giving us something back too. You know, we don't, we can only go as far as the people who carry us. So, man, are you ready for the mix today, OG? Let's see. This is a special one for me right here. And so you guys know bridging the gap has a lot to do with our, our generations and then also bringing together cultures. And right now, the mix today brought to you by DJ Lee Bueller is a special one because it features my guy. My guy, my college roommate, college teammate from out of Richmond, Virginia, goes by the name of Monday Night. And then, <laughs> yeah, and so Monday Night, as you know, is a nice little story behind it, but I let him break that down when it's time, but <laughs> but we call him Sko and, and, and Sel. He an artist, man, even from the get-go, he got bounced. Sko was one of them dudes who off two feet underneath the rim, he'll go between his legs, windmill, mm. right? He, and he's a Richmond guy, so you know that Highland Springs type of, you know, he could get to it. And so he joined us his junior year from Virginia Union, and you know, he clicked with us immediately. 
But the one thing about Skull, Skull was that he was like a walking radio. He remembered every song, every type of sample, every everything. It didn't matter where it was. It was just like naturally, like we we sit and talk about anything. And he just, he just, no, we sit down, you know, he the guy that if we all sitting down in my apartment at the crib, everybody chilling, doing their thing, and he start to freestyle. Mm -hmm. And then everybody start to freestyle, motherfuckers who can't rap, <laughs> but because he going in and going, and I was just all like, yo, like, you really do this? And so it felt good for me to see him take it serious after we graduated and after we were done with Hoop, and he, and he doing his thing, OG. Yeah. He doing his thing, yeah. and then, um, we also got a special feature on there out of Envision Worldwide, which is um, Lee's management group. It's uh, his talent acquisition thing there. So it's somebody that he's been working and helping A&R for a while. And he put a special release there that hasn't been dropped yet. And so we got some exclusive for the underground. And so UAE, Dubai, GCC, everybody that listens from all over the world, please take a step into our life, our culture, our folks with this month, this week's BTG Music Mix. Let's lock in. We will be here forever. It, 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 listen, they they, they, they bridging the gap. Yeah. They bridging the gap. Right they, they, forever and ever. Man. Ever and ever. She didn't got we will be here, we'll be here forever. Do you understand <laughs> that? What I'm Shout out to Nitty Blanco. I'm, a, I'm probably gonna punch in. Let's go, Sco. Like after that first line type shit. Yes, sir. Monday night on Monday night music everywhere. Ooh. Ooh. Shit. Shit. Hey yo. Hey yo. Captain. Uh. Uh. Hey yo. Shit. It's just a matter of time, niggas be tight and mad when you shine. I did bad a few times, I'm just glad they ain't catching me with crime was a necessity. It was the crime for my adolescence, but why? Imagine that ride to that private jet, then we fly on your ass for them files. You was supposed to text me, but lied. Lens a big size, that's why I'm smoking. Eyes wide open, I'm fried. Never tried nothing else to deal with the coping. Vapor rub for your chest, can't deal with you choking. They make it up, you put me in the triple threat, I'm facing up. I Talk to me. I done drove the whole East Coast in motion on a mission to see my folks in them Strolling from the yo again, once they see the rose they know it's him I can't see me folding, I hold it in my whole life like shit What you need clothing, y'all just now told a friend My niggas hold me Shout down to like what you need. Some from out of town in the gorgeous bins Top down with the pokey rims I lost count, who knows what I spent Shout out Jim, that was the Bible before a young nigga just hit me when it's done nigga, you, know you are now tuned in to Come the on, world's talk that famous shit. Lee Bueller. Talk that shit. Shout out to Monday night. What you need? Old scheme team. Ad libs go crazy, King. Keep the polo white tees. Slim fit. I'm with the villains. Wi Fi, we in your building. Slide by, caught him slipping. Touchdown, nigga, we winning. High five. Niggas was on the cram when we did it. You not live, man. Just listen to the fans when we spitting. We top five. That's so disrespectful for you to say something like that. Go get the wood in the air for my man to go get it. We pop fly. You are now tuned in to the world's famous Lee Bueller. Let's keep going. Shit. 
It's a lot of soul in here too. Hey yo. I'm so happy I can, I can tell what somebody's saying and they're telling a story. Temperatures mad fast, up, a puff pass, that's my signature for fast ass. A couple hundred bitches I passed on, I was mad drawn, it was bad Jones, I was past pawns, keep them tabs on them fat Jones, then I dashed ass. Uh -huh. Ten minutes for a verse was fast cash, you did worse, you mad what? I had to work since the past raps was my only swag, only I swag. mash up my riddance that give images to experience from my homie past. Yo, I'll tell you what I did from my story on what happened, it just when I'm nine stories like what's had, and I define glory. My mind worried on what might happen if I heard very aimless with no mapping, no location napping. I was so anxious, capping to my own thinking, making up my own ranking, snapping like I won't make it, faking like I won't take her back, yeah. but I won't ready. I asked her if she won't steady, passion, my old stink me, lying like they won't link me, crying like I won't thinking. My soul filled with fire, my dome baking, my home vacant. I be flying, forever skating. They can't find me, I'm never waiting. You can't find me, I'm never staying. Can't sign me, me better payments. Nigga, what you saying? You can't slide me like a hundred thousand for nothing. I just want a house to stay in. No public housing, I can't fade it. They'll put me out it. I'm steady blazing, I smoke them out it. I'll make them lazy. Niggas wildin', niggas hate me, niggas quiet. Switch up the flow on it, catch a different cadence. Niggas quiet. Versatility crazy. Ref control crazy. He been in the gym, he been putting his reps up. Shout out to Lee. This is guy. Call him Ruckus. Come on. And I crave it. Blue and pink, let's make it. Or a dog that we could play with, with a yard that dog could play in. It all just be so simple. Daddy got a word to pay the bills. And right now, daddy's at the bottom of the hill. And I never bring it up. Sometimes I feel like giving up until I see you waking up, eyes filled with love. Been working, you know how long I searched yeah. for someone to paint the walls in this plain room. You are now tuned in to the Let's Go Everywhere Mix Show it, it, with the world's listen, they, famous they, they, Lee Bueller. They bridging the gap. They bridging the gap. They, they. All exclusives right here. Oh, Father Romy got some competition. Right? <laughs> well, listen, we 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 bringing we bringing some different heat here. Listen to what you got. We gonna praise. Mm. Money close me best. I know we ain't post a question. And then we question that. Laws of war. Knew the struggle since diapers, but we adapt. I speak words into existence, but he already know. I excuse me for my grandma. I'm a bama, baby, raised on tenor. Been a young goat, never choked, and that's a true story. Rolling down the window, blunt smoke, and vision getting blurry. Wish I could just hold you one more time, but now I'm popping down and figured out all the kicks and tricks to make my mama smile. The nut is Still afraid of rocks until I break it down. Heart robber, I'm a lover, brother, father, so get nervous when I see my daughter. It, 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 listen, they 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 bridging the gap. Yeah. They bridging the gap. They they Yeah, be yeah, yeah. Yeah. Fish. Yeah. It's fish I like. And so right there was towards the end of that was ruckus. We call that 1208 ruckus. So I, I had to get a bit of a, a backdrop on what was going on because that's that's Lee Guy. And it wasn't, it was it was a little lapse in music. And so the last thing that you heard there was from his LP called 1208. Um 1208 is big ruck. And so the backstory behind it is during his um uh, during a project he was working on called Shaniqua, um his dad passed. And so when his pop passed, the whole LP was pretty much, that was his grieving period. 
He was just writing that through the grieving period. And then that's what you get because you can hear a lot of reflecting on mistakes, uh, missing out on time with, with family and having to use those memories to lock back in and feel it. And so you can you can feel it. For those last two songs, as soon as the beats came on, you felt like there was a whole different connection there. And so during that time is where his parents had passed, his dad has passed. And so um, right now he got an LP out, 1208, and 1208 was the, his home address. Um, and so you can get that on all DSPs, Monday Night Music. You can get Monday Night Music everywhere, Tidal, Spotify, but I recommend going to Bandcamp, purchase it. You can purchase it for whatever you want, but purchase it directly from those artists. Same thing with Ruck, but you guys, you know, you'll know where to find them. We'll tag them on Instagram as well. But as always, listen, they, they, they bridging the gap. They bridging the gap. They, they. That's good energy. That's my dog too, King. Like I got a, I got a full clip of, of Monday Night Music in my um, library that ain't never been out from the very beginning. And when I listen to it, I just get hyped because I'm like, my bro really been putting in those hours. Like <laughs> you, you mentioned that he uh, knows every song. That made me think about uh, at Temple we had a cat, uh, Big Jason. We call him Dog. He knew every song known to man. Yeah. And then that the cop, and you know his story about Gerald. Gerald yeah, Gerald still, like, Gerald still be having it. I know man. Gerald, listen, listen, Gerald. I notice it. If anybody else don't notice, Gerald, I notice how you be tossing out the, the matter of fact, Gerald, next episode, I'm going to have a slow jam music just for you. <laughs> I got the playlist already together. Oh I got it just God. for you. you know, I, I peeped him out there doing it, man. Yeah. <laughs> Shout out to my guy. That's a loyal one, man. That's a loyal one. So, yeah. Um, man, let's hoop mountain, man. Right? Like we said, this week is camp week. It's, yeah. it's winter camp week. It's skills camp week. It's the second time for the format that we're on where we break down the youngest and everybody gets three-hour workshop skills. And, oh, gee, this, we, we flooded. <laughs> man. Let's, let's go ahead. Yeah, we <clears throat> we wasn't expecting that today. No, nah, listen, King, half that, but not King. Uh, tell let's 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 give an insight to the conversation we had. Was it maybe Sunday or Saturday? To where he was like, "Man, if we can only get," I think he said fifteen for the first group. Fifteen for each. Fifteen for the first group. Twenty for the second group. I was yeah. like, I said that's a good number. We straight. We yeah. did rock and roll like the first camp this year in the uh, midterm camp yeah. in October. Well, for this for the second age group, the first age group, we couldn't because it, uh, it was like six. Yeah, it was like six, six to six. Yeah, but then it of those stuff. got a little bit better towards the end just yeah. because of the you know the time. But so we were saying fifteen for the first group would have been phenomenal. Great. We had no idea today it was gonna be thirty two. Thirty two for the first group for the young people. That's crazy. And then for the older group, it was another thirty four. Yep. Another 34 in there. And so Alhamdulillah, thank you. <laughs> first of all, we are all listen. Thank you, guys. We are, we are not complaining. We are not complaining. But you know how you kind of put a timeline on yourself as a business to where you expect things to explode, right? Because you just think it's going to steadily grow. And sometimes just based on what you've done in the community, things just start to pop together at the same time. Right. Right. And so 66, it managed well. You know, a lot of the kids left saying, dang, I want to keep playing. He's like, cool, that's good. That's <laughs> yeah, good. see you tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, see you tomorrow and go home and do some extra push-ups and There's stuff. No but but how, what was with a lot of new kids? A lot, yeah. What are you seeing? Because you, you, you talk to all the parents, especially exclusively on um, WhatsApp and things. What are you, what's the feedback you're getting? What's some of the initial initial contact type of stuff you're getting well, from parents from different places? Well, the, the for today, you know, of course, we've been so busy, you know, I haven't had time to, like, follow up on everybody but beforehand it was like people were calling left and right wondering when can they register you know or i just paid i need confirmation yeah you know what i'm saying because we heard so much about you guys and um you know friends and family that uh that are already in the program and then people just word of mouth from certain school uh, administrators and teachers and just you know saying good things about us so um yeah. hey man it's just um you know we our hard work's paying off. Yeah. I'm going to get Talal in, his, in them, man. Talal's sister walking there looking like young Lisa Leslie. 6'9". Yeah, <laughs> you're talking about, that's my sister. I was like, what? Yo, 
Yo, Talal came in with three people, though. I give him some love. He said, Coach, I brought people. <laughs> yeah, he did say that. He did say that. He said, I brought people, man. And so that was cool. A lot of yeah. people. And it's, it's, it's funny because the night before I had called you and I said, you know, uh, me being out in the community, because I'm the young guy, so I'm out and I'm around. So a lot of the youth from around different academies and stuff see me. Um, and, you know, other, other coaches see too, right? A lot of them don't speak. Um, but some of them do. And I can just, I can see it in the eyes. And my wife saw me talking to somebody at one point and she's like, babe, why, why are you talking? Like he like kind of whimpering, like something wrong. And I was like, I think he's, I think he's smelling, he's smelling the, 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 the fragrance. Who mountain right around the corner and it's smelling like musk. <laughs> Not the Egyptian musk either. It's something a little bit more long lasting and <laughs> getting nervous, man. And so, man, shout out to those guys. But, I think it's about time that where we kind of give kind of a, a update business wise on, on on where we are because we know there's a lot of people that follow us that um, are building things of their own back home, building programs of their own back home. Um, some people might have been doing it by themselves and didn't have somebody like me with them, so it might be time for them to bring in new coaches, which it pretty much is for us. And so let's kind of talk about where we are as a, a company and, and how the brand is growing and what it's calling for for us to look at as far as new needs. Well, <clears throat> first, we're, we're still two years behind yeah. in, in terms of adding um, the staff that we would ha you, you know typically look for. Um, and those are people that we have connections with already because um, you know we can't just bring anybody here because this is a different type of... The way we run things is completely different. Yeah. Once we start work, there is no personal feelings of all that. You know, when it's time to get something done, it's business because yeah. um, we don't want to shortchange the product. And so, um, you know, why are we behind two years? Because of COVID and some missteps at the beginning um, out of our control. But now we're straight and, um, you know, looking for the future because we're at that stage now where we got to make sure we take advantage of it. Yeah. Um, but still, we want to do it in the right way where we're not, um, you know, saturating our pro product and, um, you know, it's still something that people are going to talk about. But um, we're in a real good space. Um, the growth yeah. has been, you know, every year 30, 40 percent, yeah. you know. and with high, with high retention. High retention, for sure. Yeah, um, yeah. in terms of that, we, we typically don't lose kids unless it's um, their parents took another job and they went to another country or – they completely move to another side of town where it's just mm -hmm. so inconvenient where they can't um, participate in our activities. But, you know, it's never been an issue with, um, you know, the quality or anything like that. I mean, we're talking probably 92 plus, 93% yeah. retention rate. Yeah. And um, almost everything is referrals, which is great for us. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, we are at a point where you know, third, fourth week of the, you know, of the term, we've turned people away. Yeah. Yeah. You know? And it's just be, not because we don't want you because we have, we have kids of all, all sizes, all yeah. skill sets, you know, um, all experience levels. It's just that, you know, we can only take with so many and, um, you know, and we do our best to try to accommodate everybody. And, um, we even have to make adjustments going into the next term to make sure that our returning clients get the best service they can. Yes. And and business-wise, for a lot of you coaches, trainers, anybody that's in this industry, once you leave the gym, it's time to put your business hat on, right? And so we're in the business of sales, customer service, right? That's typically what it is. And so when we talk about growth rate and retention, those things are extremely vital to your company. And when you look at that, you also got to have a strong understanding of what built your foundation. And so when Coach talks about us not accepting everybody right now, that's something that somebody who's not chasing a dollar is going to do because you understand that, hey, maybe I can squeeze in five extra kids here. But what does that mean about the attention and the reason why the families keep coming back yeah. to me, right? What does that end up happening, right? Especially if you don't have the proper help. Now, what you got to understand, too, is how to play the long game. And you always want to create something that people need, right? People feel like they want to always get to. And, and scarcity 
does create some pandemonium. Like if people people can't can't get to it, especially here in Dubai, if there's some type of mystique around it, and then everybody can't be a part of it, that actually helps. It actually helps your branding, you know, because like Coach said, it's a lot of referrals for us, right? It's a lot of referrals. We do have a, a media footprint that is very solid too, and it's grown. But what we and that's straight from the horse's mouth here is word of mouth has been the number one thing because we know that as soon as somebody walks into the gym, what we call the hoop mountain experience begins. And as soon as they walk into the gym until the time that they leave, I'm talking about leave and go to a different country yep. <laughs> or leave and go to college. That's when it continues. That's when it's, it doesn't stop completely because all of our people that left, some of them still writing Google reviews from Canada, yep. <laughs> from India, from everywhere else. But it reduces because we can't be there. But the Hoop Mountain experience is what, what sells, right? And so for those of you that are building brands, just know that you can't, can't skip steps and don't think that you have to water down anything. Right. No matter what it may seem like to somebody that may be upset that they can't get what they need right then and there, they're respected later. Yep. They're respected later. And so well, that's a quick little update. We'll give another one a little bit later. But we got to get into some of the local news here, It'll be OG. So, um, you know, we're in a, we're in a land of innovation and being ahead between Saudi and, and uh, Abu Dhabi and Dubai and Qatar and everything else like there's some different stuff going on here. And so I just saw a headline to where it says, no passport, no visa. Abu Dhabi passengers can travel without documents. And so what they're getting to is their first step of having to just be able to just use your biometrics to go through traveling everywhere around the world, right? And so the excerpt I got here is the first step, the first phase of deploying a high-tech next generation biometric initiative has been rolled out at the Abu Dhabi International Airport. And they're building that new airport, which is insane. It just oh, did the new airport open up in Abu Dhabi already? It's open. It's insane. It's insane. It's like it's like fifteen times better than Dubai Airport. Maybe a hundred. I might might be underselling it, right? And so, wherein passengers will use their faces to get a boarding pass and avail of other services. So Abu Dhabi um, based tech company Next Fifty will introduce its cutting edge um, artificial intelligence solutions alongside global AI and technical tech solutions partner. Um, the idea Mia and S T I A. I'm probably saying that wrong, but we'll look at that later. Um, and it's a it's basically a a self service baggage touch points, immigration, electronic gates, and boarding gates before implementing the tech across all passenger touch points in the airport. And so the new tech will enhance the journey and establish midfield terminal building as the first international airport with biometric capabilities in all customer t uh, stuff. So you basically just gonna walk through the airport and just you walking through the airport, that's your face card, that's your ticket, that's everything. That's how people know you, which bag is yours and all that stuff. And it starts here. Yeah. Like, that's it. So think about that. Like, that's everybody's like that. So when you hear that, right, because you've been traveling, like you always tell us since AOL days, <laughs> and you, you've, traveled, you've, you've traveled through Post 9-11. So I never got the, yeah, I made it to one or two flights, but I was like nine or 10. But I never got to travel as an adult pre-9-11. And so that was an experience. Post 9-11 was an experience. So kind of talk about that journey of that. Well, I mean, we're bridging the gap, right? Pre-9-11, I mean, let's just say pre-9-11, those international trips were very entertaining. <laughs> Very entertaining and man and affordable. Um, post nine one man, it was crazy. Yeah, it was crazy just because it was, um, you know, it was just limitations on everything you could do. Yeah, and uh, it was it was stressful at times, but you understood why, and um, you know, things haven't things haven't looked back. Yeah, you know now it's it's um, you know, so much being put into security and um, uh, you know, inconvenience that. Uh, you know, of course, everything is going to be automated at some point. And um, it's, listen, man, it's just like, you know, you made fun of me with the, the AOL reference. Um, you know, everything is going to age out. 
yeah dinosaurs you know stuff you know stuff that um we we saw that was cutting edge for a year or two gonna be obsolete you know um and it's great but you know the only downside of it is that um the two downsides i, I always have is one just there's gonna be less of a need for human um employment that will be that's that's something that will stick with me because I have a lot of friends in the travel indi- industry um, that will suffer from this. You know, the second part is, you know, when we become so dependent on technology. You know, we start to how can I say we lose stuff. Yeah. We get into a situation where we become too dependent on it. What happens if something breaks down? Yeah, because I know it now. Like I lose my phone, I go crazy. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because everything in my life is connected to this phone. Yep. And so that's interesting because you you know, and I guess I can talk about it here now because I'm taking it serious. You know, for the last two years, I've been working on cybersecurity stuff. Yep. Been been going to classes, been learning the tech stuff, learning how big of an ocean it is and where we can transfer the skills that we know and help in the cybersecurity field because, like you said, tech is taking over. And so, like you talked about, it's going to take jobs, old jobs, yep. but new jobs are going to come. Sure. But the problem is, is that a lot of those people are going to be 25 plus years in certain industries. Right. And so you're going to ask them to make drastic changes towards the tail end of their career. And then that's where the problem is going to be. Because there's going to be jobs available, but they're going to be tech-based jobs yeah. that's going to cause for an adjustment. And so it's like... Yeah. How is that fair, yeah. right? And what type of way can we kind of mitigate yeah. the problem? Yeah, well, you know, some of them um, you're gonna they're gonna ask them to make that that huge change, right? Mm-hmm. Some people won't even get that opportunity. Yeah, some people yeah. they're not even gonna ask. Because, yeah, you know, if you've been in the, if you've been in a certain industry for you know 15, 20 years, you come with a certain salary level and things like that. And yeah. Yeah, you know your experience. Yeah. Your experience level doesn't mean anything now. So yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the only thing, man. You know, but it will be. It will be good. Of course, I will enjoy it. You know, because it makes everything easy. And so yep. I'm excited about reading that because right now, like you know, I'm working and putting together the plan on how I am going to transition. Basically, everything that I know from us building this business. Um, my school education and then the prior business stuff. It's a need for that in the cyber world, in the tech world, in the AI world. And now when you look at, like you said, these type of things are going to be implemented into our everyday life, right? But what I learned with cybersecurity is that there has to be essentially a coach there. There has to be somebody to put out the little fires that we do, right, when the machine messes up. Right. Who tells everybody, OK, when this breaks down, this is our plan to do this, 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 this and this. And only people that can do that, that most of the time are not tech savvy people. Right. There are people that come outside of the space and you don't have to be the technical guy. But if you can be the guy that puts them all together and handle it, then that's a you're a huge asset for that on top of earning it. So listening to those type of advances are cool. It's kind of it makes it fun to be here, too, because you're always in the middle of something new, you know. Like, it's always something else coming that's going to challenge the status quo, that's going to open your eyes about something that's going to make you be like, wow, I didn't know that was possible. And so now the second thing I want to bring up, because I feel like we would be, um, because especially since we know young people are listening. And so COP28, right? COP28 is another huge conference that's going on right here. The last huge conference or huge event was the Dubai Expo. Right. And we know the expo was planned, it was like 10 years or something before it got here, because the next expo was going to be in Saudi, right? 2030. And so, COP28, right? And so, um, this is aimed to building um, a successful future, a way for ambition. Hold on, let me read this because Gunga Boy put this together. Quote, all right, let me quote. This is aimed to building on previous successes and paving the way for future ambition to effectively tackle the global challenge of climate change. And so what we got here is we have world leaders from everywhere, the Pope, um, different leaders from Africa, different leaders from Russia, every part of the world here trying to find a way to put a plan together for us to globally attack climate change, right? It's, for some people, it's ironic because we're in a country that's run on fossil fuels, 
right? <laughs> that's for some people. But for people that's not here in Dubai, it may run on fossil fuels, but fossil fuel is not the only issue with climate change. Now, you and I both know that recycling, reusing, repurposing, like there are no plastic bags in this country. They're almost all the way through with plastic straws. Like you talk about the bags that they use in the store, they're not plastic, they're like compost bags and stuff. So Dubai is ahead, the UAE is ahead of the world and the way they've changed everyday life for climate change, right? And I know you're an NPR guy, you listen to all these things too as well, because people don't know, you think got layers. So what is the, what are some of the things that you've heard or talked about with people before about climate change and how they feel about it? Well, you, <laughs> you know, in the States, uh, that's, that's something that um, you have to be very, very um, cautious when speaking to people. Yeah. Because there's, there's really not many people in the middle. It's either people far to one side where they don't believe in it, Mm -hmm. And then there's people far to the, the other side where they believe in it, you know, and, mm -hmm. and both sides are, you know, fanatics about their beliefs. And so, um, you know, I, so I, it basically got to a point where I try to, I just keep it to myself. But, um, you know, those that I you know, know personally and we can have these discussions, you know, um, you wouldn't believe that there's a lot of people who were thinking that climate change was just something that, um, you know, somewhat of a hoax, yeah. so a talking point, believe in it now. Yeah. Because there's things that are happening that, you know, of course, of, of course things ha tend to um, repeat themselves in history, but here we are consistently having issues with weather in certain areas that were not issues before. Like, for example, you know, we live on the East Coast. Yeah. Since when have you ever heard your grandparents, even your mom, whatever, say there was a tornado yeah. that touched down in somewhere as, as um, far up as Maryland. Yeah. Never heard that before. Yeah. Come on, man, that's crazy. Happened consistently. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Uh, you know, hurricanes and things like that might touch every now and then, but come on, tornado? Yeah. Um, you think about, I came to the Maryland area, the DMV area, like 95. And that was one of the coldest years ever in Maryland, in D.C. There was a blizzard. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we're talking about the next three, four years. You always knew that that area had heavy snowfall in the, yeah. you know, in the winter. Now there's times where a winter or two will pass. And there's only one snow. Yeah. You know, and that's, that's just crazy. Philly, you know, Philly, Baltimore, D.C., Richmond used to get a lot of snow. But now... You know, definitely there's some warmer, some uncommon warm days in the wintertime. You know, so, that's throwing things off. So what's, what's crazy is that is with some people, so my university, right, Eastern Mennonite University, known for a lot of things, but we were one of the, probably one of the first countries in America, I mean, it's colleges in America that the school was built into this curriculum was what we called um, sustainability, right? And so we used to call it different stuff, which is now like a marketing ploy for everybody else. Because everybody <laughs> talks about green. But it was like that in 2011. Like we had solar panels that were powering our library. We had three new brand new dorms that were built the year that I got there. And they were all fully powered by solar panels. We had, our, we had a compost area to where all of our food and trash from our... Um, from our cafeteria was used as to start building soil so we can have our own vegetables and fruits and things. And like you said, there were a lot of people there and most of the people who were extremists as professors there were in the business department, right? Right, which is kind of a surprise if you don't know any better, but we're in the business department, right? And so I used to get frustrated with hearing it because this is an older white guy talking about how your grandchildren aren't going to have a country or a world because it's going to explode because it's going to be over. It's going to be overheated. I'm just like, what? What? That's not how you sell this message to us. Like, there's other ways to do it. And so, but when you do hear about it and pay attention to it, it also affects the crops that we get, right? It affects the the poultry, the, the meat, every industry affects that, right? And so now we're looking at, um, with this type of conference, it's including banking and financial institutions, right? And so when you think about 
when you think about um, oil and gas and how much money is behind that and now telling the world that we're going to have to all the way remove ourselves from using it or at least decrease the use of that by 50, 60, 70 percent. Like how crazy is that going to sound for those financial institutions? When you think about America, right? <laughs> you think about the Rockefellers, you think about Carnegie, you think about all those people who built up on oil and gas. And now we're going to say, hey, this next generation is not going to have it, right? And so it's going to be interesting to see how it goes, but it has to happen. Right. Right. It has to have some type of adjustment. And it says a lot for the UAE to be leading that. Um, and so, um, well, you got something you want to ask, Snipes? Yeah, I mean, I, I won't say the UAE is leading that because one of the first speeches that Carl made was against the Saudi Arabia. Mm-hmm. And then he said, that, look, we as OPEC members, we as the Middle East, we're not here to remove ourselves from the Gulf. Yeah. Right. Okay. Man, will you shut up? He yeah. just said that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He just said that for for like <laughs> he spoke the same thing in like two minutes. Here you are. Here you are trying to make it sound more. Uh, uh, how can I say it? He, he, uh, eloquent or yeah, scientific. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 He just said that. Because oh, you, you weren't listening. So since you brought up Africa, one of the biggest headlines I've just seen, King, so there's a new African billionaire, 38-year-old billionaire, right? And he's going to build, and he's a billionaire now because he's going to build um, an oil exploration firm. So he just secured a $750 million loan from Ghana to build this here and it's a private, it's a private industry, it's a private company that's going to, you know, go and find oil across the country and build it. And there's no clear incentive on what the country will get. Seven hundred fifty million dollar loan to make that happen. So again, like I said, there's so much money involved with this. There's oil everywhere. It's going to be interesting to see how this changes. But I will say, if UAE is not considered a leader in it. I will say from being from the West and from America and having uh, both in my schema, I will say they lead in something because we, we, what we, they do every day in the everyday life is something that we haven't done or haven't been able to implement at when you, all. When you think about it, what is the Middle East known for from the West? Oh, oil, oil, right? Yeah. For them to even have this and host it says a lot. Yeah. You know what I mean? Of course, no one is going to completely be dependent of fossil fuels. But there's different ways that we can clean it up. You know what I mean? And so if people are even willing to listen to other people give them ideas, suggestions about it, then that means we're making progress. Because you think about it, when we talked about those some of those conversations I've had before, people wouldn't even wouldn't even think about it. You know what I'm saying? It's almost like if you've ever been to West Virginia, coal mining is yeah. is, is is God, you know, Western Pennsylvania. You know, coal miners, um, you know, that's something that's been, you know, four or five generations of people, families. You know, now they're even trying to find ways to, you know, clean up the way things are done. You know what I'm saying? Because those jobs are, it's either either you find ways to adapt or you completely, you know, you know, you die out. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And they don't want that industry to completely die out because there are still ways to be profitable and, you know, and useful at the same time so yeah and so and now we're opening up these we're opening up these discussions because you know guys pretty soon we'll probably have a guest on the show all right somebody that'll be just probably more informed than us that helps bridge that gap but it's interesting because when we talk about stuff like that things that kind of die out and, and supplements have to come in immediately i'm thinking about diamonds too as well yeah. right everybody knows about those um ethical practices and issues within that um not just issues just inhumane right but now you see lab grown diamonds yeah. lab grown diamonds that are going for the same type of prices too might i add <laughs> crazy I mean, man, but listen, it's, it's lab grown meat there's, too there, there's lab grown meat man. Two, 2d and 3d meat my boy what <laughs> And so um, I got snipes looking up, but I saw something where the U.S. the U.S. may be banning meat in twenty by twenty thirty. Why? 
I, I got Snipes looking it up. Um, okay. And so Biden's climate plan is to include cutting 90% of red meat from our diets by 2030. Now, what I will say is I watched um, I watched a documentary uh, when I was in undergrad um, while I was doing my uh, doc class, and I had to do it, and it's called Cowspiracy, all right? Cowspiracy is the reason why I went pescatarian and stopped eating poultry, red meat, and everything for four years. And you look at... In America, the CO2 omitted from the raising of cows and how that directly attributes to the issues with the climate. And you think about it like meat is money. All that is how much can we produce so people can consume? And we're overproducing and that's killing the climate. And then it's crushing off all the greenery. And first of all, when I see chickens couldn't stand up anymore because they were getting hit with steroids and they weren't actually developing like they were supposed to. It made sense to why a chicken was tasting crazy anyway. But cowspiracy, you know, eat, watch it at your own, you know, risk. But when I, when I see Biden say something like that, that brings me back to 2014 when I when I saw somebody say we need to cut back 60 percent. Now you're at 90 because it's almost too late. How do you do that? It's not confirmed yet because you know how they get stuff out. But there's probably somebody in the Senate that wants to yeah. pass a bill. Yeah, and they they done. released it. There's some. Uh, was the other one what the health or something? Yeah, like that? yeah, yeah. Like, I mean, have you ever been to a uh, um, like a was it a poultry farm? You ever been to one? I mean, well, you know, we lived it's in Harrisonburg. It was a poultry farm. Well, I, had, I had to ask because I've been to one. It smelled crazy, man. But well, that shit had the whole town stinking. Yeah, yeah. yeah it ain't right. Yeah. It ain't right. Yeah, I mean, what I mean, what those chickens have to go through, man, it's crazy. Yeah. That's why they, you know, that's you know, sometimes why the meat is different because they're stressed. Listen. You know what I'm saying? When you when you live in like this. You know what I'm saying? You can't yeah. roam as freely as you're supposed to. I mean, yeah. it takes a toll on you, man. That's why if it ain't halal, I don't want it. <laughs> I don't want it. I don't want it. And so that's our news update for today for the BTG newscast. <laughs> we might got to put the suit on and start giving the world class news like BBC. And everything. We gotta put, yeah, we got to put them on NPR. Yeah, yeah, yeah. CNN International. You know what I'm saying? So right right into it, we got to get into basketball to, before we wrap up the pod. My Lake Show, let's talk about it. You know, AD finishing off the end season tournament with 41 and 20. LeBron winning the first ever MVP for the tourney. What was LeBron's numbers for the whole tournament? Find me his averages for the tourney. But hey, Lakers win the first end season tournament. Um, everybody gets a $500,000 check for that victory. I believe the second place got 250000 and then the other teams got 100 racks. Um, a lot of good news coming out of here, King. A lot of great feedback from people. All of the fans love it because early in the season, you're getting people competing, fighting hard for it. How do you how do you feel about it? And did you get to talk to any of your people and your guys back home about it? Yeah, no, I haven't talked to anybody about it yet. But um, I like it. Like I yeah. said, you know that's something um, you know international players have for forever. You know, you play your regular season, you play cup games. Yeah, and so I like it because um, you know there was a need to do something to pick up the pace, so to speak, because guys were taking it easy because they knew, like you know what, we really as long as we stay. You know, somewhere um, middle of the pack, we just got to pick it up after the All Star break. But for you know, and and people think like, well, you know, somebody like LeBron, you know, five hundred thousand isn't nothing. But somebody like LeBron, and he mentioned this too, knows that there's guys on the team. That's a big check. There's people that work within the team. That's a big check. Man, they, so. they doubled the salary of their <laughs> GC, G League and two-way guys. They yeah. doubled their salary yeah. right there. And you're on the right side of history, as they'll say. Because yeah. now it's Bron. And I and I, and I got to get at Ike about this, too, because Ike said something slick about um, LeBron knowing about all his individual accolades and pointing them out and things. Every, every, every star, every athlete, everybody that wants to be good at something, regardless, they all know it's a team sport. But you got to have something personally that pushes you to the next space. Everybody so, knows what that next individual accolade is so, for sure. 
Let let me let me give a little defense to the guys like LeBron now. It's everywhere. Yeah. It's 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 everywhere on social media, it's on live mm -hmm. news, everything. So he would there's no way he could escape it anyway. But when you go back to the guys who were great before, you think they didn't go out of their way to get the newspaper? You think they didn't get the, the stat sheet? Come on, man. You, that's what that's what makes you who you are. Exactly. You think Magic Magic Watch Bird getting MVPs, getting accolades, you think he wasn't like, man, I'm better. I got to go do that. It's the same thing. Like, that's what an individual does. And so, Braun pointing that out, that is what somebody who's accomplished everything has to do to keep themselves motivated. Because what does somebody that has everything in the world, what do, like, like they say, what do I give somebody as a present who already has everything? Yep. Right. And so he already has touched everything there is to touch in basketball. He's done it all. And so now you put something new in there to re-energize a 39 year old who's looking like he got another 15 in. Him, yeah. Right. Um, but let's, there's two people we got to talk about from the end season tournament. Right. First, we'll get to the good side. Anthony Davis, my boy. I have been on here for about two and a half years now since we started the podcast talking about how I am concerned about the future of our Laker organization only because I'm not sure what type of guy is going to come out of the locker room who's wearing that number three jersey. But my boy, don't do what you did yesterday, or this is going to be probably two weeks late. Don't do what you did in that 41-20 performance where you dominated, spit flying out your mouth, eyebrow catching on fire. Don't do that and then throw up a donut when you play against Embiid and Joker and and Sabonis and all of them. Like, you just, you just, you just teased us, my boy. You, you look like top five bigs <laughs> you my man uh, Darvin Ham said he gave us Ray Lewis energy on on defense right I, I'm with that don't do that and then and then shy away from the moment when it's time because that's what makes it hard because you because if you got you got 40 and one and 20 in you it's not hard it's not too much for us to ask for 26 and 15 to average it's not too much to ask and as soon as I was about to jump off the boat, you here you go. <laughs> I don't know what was it the end season tournament? What, what? It was just Miles Turner though. It was, like it was just him. He they didn't he didn't have any uh uh you know a reliable backup to come in there to give Anthony some resistance while he gets a, a quick break here. And it was just Miles Turner by himself. And so it, to me it was basically a four going against the four. But this is the only thing I say is we watched a lot of him. And in those matchups, he's supposed to dominate like this one. He still don't do that. We He played the Bulls the other day. He had like nine points. Well, that, all right, that's what I'm saying. So because this was the in-season tournament, there's really nothing to lose. So I, I, I'm i waiting to see what he does in the yeah, playoffs. That's yeah. all, all, all I'm saying is we know you got it in you, bro. Don't you play. Don't you play. Because if you're looking like that, Austin Reeves doing his thing, and I talked about this earlier in the season. Toy and Prince, Jay Vanderbilt, who's back, Cam Reddish, Max Christie, and Rui Hachimura. All of them is between 6'8 and 6'9 as wings, and they all strap up and all can score off the bounce and Cam has been great. And so I love what we've done with our wing defenders right there. Austin Reeves with 28 off the bench. For all you Austin Reeves haters, you just you just got to keep watching. Why, you keep why watching. is there Austin Reeves haters? People people got a misconception of people of his value. They're thinking cuz he got paid a certain amount that he's supposed to do 25 and 7 7, right? Not understanding that him doing whether well, he if he averaged seventeen seven and seven off the bench for the year, that is outstanding. <laughs> that is outstanding considering you're playing with LeBron and Anthony Davis, and you're somebody that needs the ball in your hands too. Like, let's keep going, but OG, let's get right to it. All right, what? you sent this to me. Zion Williamson, Pelicans. He responded as being too laid back after we beat them by damn near forty over there. And so the Pelicans released a statement talking about how they can't get him to lose weight and take it serious. Uh, <clears throat> I ain't got nothing else to say. 
<laughs> well, the funny thing is, you know how I don't like the in season tournament floors, and you guys, oh, yeah. and you you guys told me that that's just for the tournament for the graphics, whatever. Because that made Zion look super big. Because <laughs> I was like, this. At first, I was like, nah, this is just this is no, I'm saying this is something Photoshop, whatever. You know what I mean, it's a joke. But it was really him, and he was just, he was barely getting up the court. He made LeBron look like he was 23 again. Man, LeBron was playing like uh, 07 Rondo defense below the foul line all the way back, my boy. It was like a bowling ball out there. It was crazy. So, my man, look, look, my man Bubba Dub said that he still had turkey in him. He said he, he looked like the leftover Thanksgiving meal out there. I was like, oh, you said that? You crazy. Listen, so, when I saw that, you know, I immediately just go to the comments because it's funny. And people, what's not funny is that so many people were defending Zion and saying that his privacy was violated. <laughs> I'm like, what? We, you didn't see him out there? What? And so, and you know, and um, people are saying that they shouldn't have said anything, right? But in today's NBA, which is a players run league, you know that they've exhausted all the other avenues of trying to get him to lose weight. And now you just have to go personal, be, I mean, pri uh, public, because you need everyone to know and your fan base to know, like, it ain't us. We didn't try. You know what I'm saying? And it's and if he were, say, if he worked uh, for Federal Express, UPS, or he was a teacher or whatever, they probably wouldn't come out. Mm -hmm. But you'd be fired. But he's been given so much money on potential, they can't fire him. Mm -hmm. So what what other tactic do you have except maybe putting public pressure on him? And um, and people don't understand when you make that kind of money and you're you're in the public's eye and you make your money because people come to see you play. We're supposed to know. Mm -hmm. And it's in his contract. So when Coach brings up those examples of teaching and Federal Express and UPS, he's not saying that those guys got to lose weight. What he's saying is, is that we've given you clear objectives and tasks that you got to complete, you got to do. And we've been giving you chances because you're a valued employee. Yeah. But if you haven't checked the boxes and we've given you umpteen chances, then it's time to go. But when you got a $200 million guy over there, it ain't just that simple. You got to get your return on investment. Right. right. And, and, and what's your job? Yeah. You're an athlete. You're supposed to be in shape. Yeah. You're in the, how old is he, 23? He's something like that. He young. He below, he young. He below 25. That's what I'm sure. saying. Like, so, so everybody that's upset, Ask yourself, what is he supposed to do? Yeah. Like, you know, I'm I, if I'm a teacher, yeah, I can be I can be a little overweight because that ain't that ain't part of my job. You know what, you know what I always go back to and, and I always look at it and think is really telling is that you know the number one person who comments on it? Charles Barkley. Yep. Who knows better than Charles? Yep. Charles says this all the time. He's like, man, I just don't know how you haven't made a change. I remember Moses Malone told me <laughs> that I was fat yep. and I had to get together. He said it hurt his feelings. Yep. He said, but he went and got it together and it changed his life. Yep. And I mean, Charles Barkley was MVP in the league during the time of MJ. Yep. And you got it. For those of you young bucks who don't understand what that means, that is equivalent to when Derrick Rose at 22, 23, 21, whatever age he was, won the MVP in the middle of LeBron's prime. Kobe was still playing, you know. Like, yeah, Kobe, all those like, guys, like winning that. And so that's what it was like for Chuck to win. Not saying he was that young, but that type of dominance was around him during that time. So, um, Zion, get your shit together, dog. Yeah, it's simple, man. Yeah, man. Like You got $200 million from – that's the new contract, right? Yeah, because they remember, remember they weren't gonna give it to him because he hadn't played. Yeah, and he was hurt. Yep. And you know a lot of your injuries got to do with what? Yeah, your weight. And then you put the claws in, just like. But, but hey, we'll see how it goes. We rooting for you though, man. We want to see you do well. And, and aren't you? Isn't he sponsored by um, Jordan? Jordan? Come on, man. Like, come on. Jay. Yeah, represent him. Come on, man. Come on, man. And so getting right into that, his his draft partner, his AAU teammate. Ja is on the way back. When this episode drops, he would have already played a game. He would have they, been back. They need him. But, hey, listen, <laughs> listen. 
I'm just I'm I'm interested to see what type of story is going to be written now. You know, like I can't wait to see what he looks like on the court. Um, it's going to be electric. It's going to be fun. Um, what What are you expecting for the season for him? You know, man, it's tough to predict only because we don't know how he's going to handle. We know how he handles the spotlight because he's been he's been a star already. But man, how's he going to handle this? Because you know every you know uh, every time they're on the road, they're going to go fans going to go at him. Yeah, they're going to go at him. You know, and his team is losing. So is he going to like you know what I mean? Overdo it trying to get it all back yeah. quickly. You know what I mean? That's the thing. You know, and is he going to be frustrated with his new? You know, with the new cast. Yeah. So what what did happen was um, Dave Adam Silver came out and said that he has been in compliance with everything. He's done everything. He's shown me everything I needed to to see, um, and he's excited to have him back. And won't be any limitations for that. Right now, my the next part of this that I think is interesting is um, he won't be eligible for any of those postseason extra awards. Right, like uh, all NBA and all those things, because you know now they have a game limit that you have to play. Right, and I believe it's like sixty something, and he's going to miss twenty five games. It's always been a game limit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, but it's lower now because of, it's well, it's a it's a lower number that you can miss because of the people that were resting. Yeah, right. And so um, it's going to be interesting to see how that goes. But because of the play in, they have a chance. Right, because you think about now, it's the top ten teams, right, and then those bottom four always play against each other in the play-in tournament. And so, right now, what's the standings? Um, what's the standings in the West? Where do they stand at? Uh, no, no, no. Just go to Memphis. Memphis they're thirteenth in the West. They, what's their record? Six and fifteen, and how many games behind are they from tenth uh, place? Six games behind from tenth place, right? And so, you six games. You've done the math. Is it like thirteen, nineteen? Like what is that? Okay, so the six games, right? You can make that up. You can make that up with the way the league flows and how people and who's in that tenth place. Pelicans, right? You don't know what Zion's gonna look like, <laughs> right? CJ just got back from his punctured lung, right? Okay. And then Brandon Ingram again. You don't know what that's gonna look like, right? And he still got a relatively young team. And then who's in ninth? Clippers. And the eighth. Rockets. So those, and then who's who's uh, seven? Suns. Suns, right? So I don't think the Suns and Clippers will be at that bottom space that long. Suns for sure won't be there. there. The Suns will finish top six, I think, right? But those others, between the Pelicans, the Clippers, and everybody else, they can catch them. They can catch them because he's that dynamic. And you've seen them go on 13-game winning streaks and stuff like that before. And sometimes the schedule is favorable because when he comes back, who does he? Who do they play when he comes back? Um, ooh. Yeah, so. Um, that would be good, him against um, Zion, two old teammates. Yeah, it's a good bump. And so, yeah, and so let's just keep it in the NBA before we head out of here. Josh Giddy, right? Because we can't talk about Ja and not talk about Josh Giddy, right? <laughs> Josh Giddy, um, he's been questioned about possible involvement with an underage young lady, um, something – some social media stuff went viral on Twitter, formerly known as Twitter, now known as X, and it showed him in a compromising space. And so, you know, that circulated around Thanksgiving. You know, the media is not going to let that go away. They're getting on a young guy and was like, yo, what's going on? Where, what were you doing with this young lady? And so Adam Silver finally comes out and says something because everybody is like, listen, like this is underage potential, like, Assault, and you haven't done anything. Giddy has played in every game. He's got paid for everything. And people go back and talk about, you know, Kyrie didn't break a law. (laughs) 
Kyrie didn't have allegations for anything. You know, plenty of people who've been alleged to do something had to take time away from the team, right? This guy hasn't had to do anything. And so what Adam Silver said is, I can't think of many circumstances where we've suspended a player based on an allegation alone, where there is a criminal investigation, we take a back seat, and that's where we currently stand. And so the female is allegedly a high school student, someone that he met at a club or something of that nature. Um, and so he's from Australia. So Australia's age of consent is 16. Yep. Um, and, in, and in Oklahoma. There's certain states. Where yeah, and in ridiculous. Oklahoma as well. Um, and so I don't know, but I believe this happened in California where the age of consent is 18. What I do know is that the police saying that the family of the young lady are not answering any questions. Um, how do you feel about the way the NBA has handled it? So <laughs> I think they may know something we don't know and may not want to rush the judgment so they don't get sued. Because you know the one, the first thing that you know the 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 big sports um, organizations do in the states, they always worry about cancel culture. You know, if it's a situation where they think like you're definitely guilty, or you sitting down because yeah. they don't want the backlash for it. Yeah. So I, I don't know. Um, I, it's tough because you you definitely you think that if um. You're like, why is the family not cooperating? You know, one, is she, did she lie to get into certain situations and lie to him? Or are they not cooperating because they're building a case against him? You know what I mean? It's, it's yeah. a tough one, you know? Yeah. Like, this, like I know people want to talk about, like, why is it? But this is a little different than someone just getting a suspension, whatever, and maybe losing... Like, this could be jail time. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. you know. And, and then there's a difference between the league's bylaws and calls on how people have to operate as a member of the society, of the NBA group, right? And so if you violate that, that's a little bit different than, say, you really breaking the law altogether. And so, but like you said, what people don't know is that he could sue for loss of wages if he feels like he's wrongly set aside and that he can't play when nothing has been proven, yeah. right? And so, um, especially because he hasn't broken any property laws based on, you know, what but, they say. But it's weird. It's weird. It's, it's weird. It, of course, anything like this is weird. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because when you look at the pictures, it was almost as if, like, he ain't know. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Or, like, he ain't care, like, yeah. in, in, the, in the sense that, like, I, she was of age, whatever. So... We I don't know. I'd hate to say anything on it. But you know, I, I think back to um what's my man's name? He was a football player. I think he played maybe for the Ravens, Ray Rice. Was that right? Mm -hmm. Was that the guy at the hotel incident? In the elevator. And like it was a video. You know. He was he he wasn't he wasn't gonna be suspended into the video. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Like every he was cool, he was good until they got the hands on that video and it was yeah. like Yeah. And, and so, so just think if just think if they had suspended him and the video showed that nothing happened yeah oh, he could retire yeah and so allegedly we don't know anything we don't confirm anything we are not a news outlet <laughs> we're not putting out anything right <laughs> so all disclaimers so apparently allegedly okc knew about this story a year ago but what is being said is rumored is not it's not confirmed is that the young lady used a fake ID to get into the club that they were all at and that she lied to her age. Now, you got to prove that in the court of law. Yep. You know, all those things have to be proven. But if that even a little bit of that proves to be true, we know in the, in the, this is the only time where somebody is innocent to proven guilty, right? It's the only time I see that. But, um, man, interesting times, interesting times, interesting times. And so let's see how it goes. And before we get into our – um, our, our BTG Nation wrap up and our post game wrap up. OG, I got a little, got a little motivation for you right here. I think you'll, I think you'll enjoy this one. BTG Nation, listen up. Oh, oh. Vibrate on the frequency, emotions. Oh. Vibrate on the frequency, emotions is a magnet. Thoughts manifest. Now you're forced to take action. Fail. 
but fail faster because endurance is a test. We only learn when we fall, every note turns to yes. Take a deep breath. <sighs> Don't become overwhelmed by the stress. Think about what you overcame, the situation will be next. Life is long, live it, survive, move on to the next. I made mistakes, I'm a new man, but God gave me a second chance. No fear, I gotta go for mine. The top is only for those who climb. It's a lonely road when you chosen, so never wait to be given roses. Grow your own, stay focused, your time is approaching. And treat family and huh. friends the same when it's time to judge, because you can see through water, but not through blood. Never be afraid to fail, we only lose for not trying, and procrastination is another form of dying. Mm -hmm. Every life serves a purpose, but a fish won't climb a tree. Open your eyes and see what you really want to be. Ooh. That D1 hey, or something? Hey, listen, they, nah, they, that they, D1. They're bridging the gap. They're bridging the gap. They, they... Man, <laughs> shit, they got serious. Man, that's just a little love. I thought we, we I, was, I was supposed to start the pod with that, mm -hmm. but... You know, better late than never, man. That's good energy. We get some words, a little vibrations in there as we get ready to, to close it out today, OG. So with that, you know, that's our, we're going to start our post-game wrap-up. I know you got something good in there. Um, situational awareness, mm. you know. Um, you know, mm. in terms of basketball, we always talk about, like, you know, time, score, possession, right? But... I'm, I want to talk about this in terms of like where we're going in the next stage of our life. And um, I, I use this in reference to like some young men, it's about four or five of them right now that I'm trying to help, you know, mm -hmm. fulfill their dreams. And um, let's just say opportunities have been presented to them and they're not really understanding the moment and appreciating the opportunity and understanding that that opportunity can be gone in the blink of an eye. And, and the situation awareness is this for them. In order to know where you want to go, mm. you got to know where you came from. Ooh. You know what I'm saying? And, <laughs> and so some of these guys aren't really looking or taking a, a, a deep breath and looking at where they are and and where they're trying to go it's like it's like me wanting to get a a rolls royce mm -hmm. and i got a hyundai mm -hmm. you know not not the new hyundais now mm -hmm. i'm talking about you know the old ones you know what i mean the hyundai accent yeah. too <laughs> <laughs> you know and not understanding that there's steps to this where i might have to go from a hyundai to an accord an accord to you know Lex, a sequoia Lex. or whatever you know and then make my jump you know very rarely do you take those, you skip those steps without having something miraculous happen. And so I'm trying to explain to these guys that what the path that you're taking right now, you're the forerunners. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be a lot tougher for you. But down the road, you're going to be able to look back with pride and say, those guys are getting opportunities because of me. Yeah, you know, but but they're not understanding where they come they came from because they think that things should be given to them, or they're not understanding that where they want to go is extremely hard, and very few people in the world get these opportunities. So, situational awareness, man you mm -hmm. you have an idea of where you want to go. First, think about where you came from. Man, listen, man. It, 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 listen. They 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 bridging the gap. They bridging the gap. They. they King, listen, dog. You know that makes me think of uh, Atlanta. How that next year after I graduated, y'all was playing <laughs> in the, the Atlanta Hawks stadium. Like that's that's facts. You set the standard for something for the people after you to benefit off of, yep. right? And so, um, for my post game wrap up, I've been able to get back into reading consistently the way I want, right? So I finished a couple new books, a couple older books that I had on the waiting list, and then I started a new one. And that's really been challenging the way I need need to think going into this next phase of life, as you say. And so the it's a bunch of stuff that's been c catching my eye, and I have almost want to rate and highlight the whole damn book. But this excerpt specifically is something that I feel like is important for right now. Um, you can't receive something for nothing, all right? Quote, at the counter of success, there are no bargains. A price must always be paid in advance. 
And so when we look at basketball, and we talked about this last uh, a few pods ago when I talk about a long journey for something. When you look at basketball, a lot of times right now, people see somebody, everybody sees when somebody is successful. They see when they get their shoe deal. They see when they get their beverage deal. They see when they sign that big contract. Or they see that 50-point game. Or they see that big dunk on somebody's body. But what they don't see is those hours in the gym by yourself, those hours late night running, those hours in the weight room where you're pumping and nobody else is there, those times where you skipped out on going out, those times where you skipped out on eating that meal that wasn't going to do well for your diet, right? And on the other end, you know, I've watched nurses in college skip out on every Friday night so they can be prepared for their nursing exam. And now they're traveling the world doing what they wanted to do. But they had to pay a price far in advance before that reward came to them. And so don't ever, if anybody ever tells you that they're giving you something and nothing in return, it ain't, it ain't right. Stay far away from them. For whatever it is, there's always a give and a take. You can't have anything unless you give up something. And so BTG Nation, that's what we're going to end it with. You guys know how it is. You know where to find us. Bridging the Gap everywhere. Spotify, Apple, Amazon, Google, everything. YouTube, like, subscribe, comment. Um, Who Mountain Dubai, Who Mountain DXB, Who Mountain.ae. As always, keep it simple, keep it real, and keep going. On that led to greatness that advanced from player and coach to brother to brother. They both got views that you need to discover. From sports, current events to just life talk. Whether you on a fast break or a nice walk, gotta tune in. You already know, G. This BTG Nation and you one of the homies. Just tune in. You already know, G. BTG Nation, the other ones in the nosebleeds.